You know, I wish I would have had this information when I first started out. Instead, I spent almost 15 years struggling financially. But by applying the exact same secrets of the millionaire mind that you're about to learn here, I became very wealthy. And now you can do that too. I want to share with you something called the process of manifestation or how we create our results. Your thoughts lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, and all of that leads to your results. Now, each of us has a personal money and success blueprint already ingrained in our subconscious mind. It is this blueprint, more than anything and everything else combined, that will determine your financial life. What that means is you can be the best business person, the best negotiator, you can be the best marketer, but if your subconscious money blueprint isn't preset for a high level of success, you will never amass a large amount of money. And if by chance you do, you will somehow manage to lose it. The good news is you can actually change your money blueprint. By the way, you've already started by acknowledging you have a money blueprint and by making the declarations you're learning today. So. Let's talk about how your blueprint is formed. The blueprint is formed primarily based on the programming you received in the past, especially as a young child. Isn't it true that certain cultures have a certain way of thinking and dealing with money and that other cultures have a completely different way of thinking and dealing with money? Does a child come out of the womb doing money that way or were they taught how to do money? The fact is we are all taught how to do money. And the issue is that most of us were taught by people who either didn't have a lot of money or they had a lot of emotional issues around it. And their ways of thinking became our ways of thinking. All right, let's talk about how we're conditioned. Three primary methods of conditioning. There's verbal programming, there's modeling, and there's specific incidents. Verbal programming. That's all about what did you hear when you were young? What messages did you get? Modeling, that's all about what did you see when you were young? And specific incidents, what did you experience when you were young around money, success, wealth, and rich people? Let's start with verbal programming. What were the phrases or messages that you heard about money and success and rich people when you were growing up? In addition to the generic messages that we heard, we also heard about stereotype messages. For example, if you're a man, maybe the message that you somehow got was that your job in life is to be a provider. And if you're not financially successful, you're not a real man. Now, whether you became financially successful or not, how has it felt to have that pressure on you? What have you missed out of in your life? Your family, your fun, your inner peace because of the stress of what you were conditioned to believe about putting bread on the table. And yet, this is simply a blueprint you've been running. With the lessons you're learning in this program, it can change. In my experience, when you've got money handled, it positively affects every other part of your life. So maybe the message you got was, you don't need a lot of money because when you retire, the government is going to take care of you. This Maybe that made some sense in the past, but as most of us know, the government is almost bankrupt. And I suspect that it won't be long before the social security bin is bankrupt too. Then what are you going to do? Newsflash, trusting your financial life to someone else is not a strategy for wealth. So. Here's a wealth step that will help you change your money blueprint. Are you ready? First, it's important for you to know that all change begins with awareness. Very difficult to change something unless you know that it exists. I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to create a T-chart. And I'm going to ask you to write down on this side all of the non-supportive statements you heard or the messages you got about wealth and money and rich people when you were young. All the ones that are non-supportive, I want you to write on this side. And then for each one of those, I want you to write a much more empowering point of view. Now, I'm not saying that this is your point of view today. It may or may not be, but objectively, a much more empowering point of view. Let's see if we have some examples over here. Here's a good example. Rich people are greedy. And we can change that to rich people are generous. Here's another one. It takes 
money to make money. Let's change that to it takes creativity to make money. By the way, just so you know, talk about creativity. People go, that's not true. It takes money to make money. Really? How many hundreds? No, let's make that thousands. No, let's make that tens of thousands of people have come to this wonderful country, immigrants. They came with nothing. In a few years, they're fairly rich. They didn't have money. They didn't have anything. It takes what? Creativity to make money. And the next one goes, I'm too old to make a change. And we can change that too. I'm never too old to learn. Now, after you do this, what I want you to do is I want you to read the positive statements out loud three times each every single day. For how long? Until you're rich. Words have power. And these declarations will eventually become saturated into the neurological pathways of your mind. And all of a sudden, you will find yourself making new decisions and with new choices come new results. All right, well, let's talk about modeling. Question, what were your parents or guardians like in the arena of money when you were growing up? Did one or both of them manage money well, or did they mismanage money? Were they spenders or were they savers? Were they shrewd investors or were they non-investors? Let me ask you this. Did money come fairly easily in your household or was it always a struggle? Let me ask you this one. Was money a source of joy in your home too? Or was it a source of bitter arguments? Why are we talking about this? Why is it important? Well, how many of you ever heard the saying, monkey see, monkey do? And of course, humans aren't far behind. So generally, we will tend to be exactly like one or a combination of both of our parents in the arena of money, unless we go exactly the opposite. Now, why would someone go the opposite? That's right. Well, it depends on how angry you were at them. By the way, if you're a baby boomer or a senior, one of the simplest reasons you may not be reaching your full financial potential is that your parents or even yourself went through the Great Depression. In which case, because there was never enough, you might be a saver or even a hoarder and overly cautious, meaning you probably don't take advantage of excellent opportunities when they come your way. Or you could have gone the opposite route and became a spender. Why? Because maybe the attitude was, hey, it's going to go anyways. Of course, neither of these money blueprints work. And this modeling could actually be the main reason you've never reached your full financial potential. Next, let's talk about specific incidents and how a single experience can determine your entire financial life. So here's the big question. What is your current money blueprint set for? Well, how can you tell? Simple. Look at your results. Look at the fruits that will tell you what the roots are set for. Look at the house that will tell you what the blueprint looks like. Let me put it this way. If the temperature in the room is set for 72 degrees, now here's where it gets interesting. Is it possible, because it's really cold outside and the windows are open, that the temperature in that room could say go down to 65 degrees? Yes, but what will eventually happen? That thermostat will kick in and drive that temperature right back to 72. And the only way to permanently change your financial life is to change your financial thermostat, otherwise known as your money blueprint. It all begins with the way you think. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine some of the ways that rich and successful people think very differently than unsuccessful people in order to consider adopting those ways of thinking and resetting our financial blueprints. Now, we're going to call these ways of thinking wealth secrets. Rich and successful people believe I create my life and unsuccessful people believe life happens to me. If you want to create real success, it is imperative that you believe that you are at the steering wheel of your life. You have to believe that you are the one who creates your success, you are the one who creates your mediocrity, and you are the one creating any financial struggle. But instead of taking full responsibility for their lives, most people instead, they play the role of the victim. Now, victims usually leave three indelible clues. So the first one they seem to have in common is they blame the economy, they blame their type of business, they blame the stock market, they blame the real estate market, they blame the city they live in. It's always something else, it's always someone else, or they do this.
they justify their situation by saying something like, well, you know, money's not all that important. Well, let me ask you a question. If you said that your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend wasn't that important, would they be around for very long? I don't think so, and neither would what? Money. If you don't think money's important, would you have any? Of course not. Anybody who says money's not important doesn't have any. Complaining is the absolute worst possible thing you could do for your health or your wealth. The worst. Why? There's a universal principle that says what you focus on expands. And have you ever noticed that complainers usually have a crummy life? So here are some wealth steps that will change your blueprint and change your life. First of all, no complaining for seven full days. Not in here and not out here. It's your choice. You can be a victim or you can be rich, but you cannot be both. So you choose because every single time that you blame or you justify or you complain, you are slitting not only your financial throat, but your happiness and your health throat as well. Let me give you another well step along with this one. This is very simple. Start taking full responsibility for everything that is happening in your life, especially when it comes to your money. I want you to think of your financial goals in terms of two things. The first one is in terms of income. Second one is in terms of your net worth. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Let's say that one of your financial goals for income is that, you know, you want to earn, say, $100,000 a year. And let's say your goal for net worth might be a million dollars. Now, here's another wealth secret. Rich and successful people, they play the money game to win. Most other people play not to lose. Here's the thing. Most people actually play the money game on defense versus offense. In sports, let me ask you a question. Anytime you play any game strictly on defense, tell me, what are your chances of actually winning that game? Very slim and very none. And most people's primary concern is survival and security. So what is your goal? What is your true objective? What is your intention? Wealthy people's intention is to create abundance. Most broke people, their intention is to have enough to pay the bills or just get by or I just want to earn a decent living. And you know what? Due to the power of intention, that's exactly what you're going to get and not a dime more. This is why I have a very, very deep concern with older people setting the intention that they're going to live on a government or company pension. Let me say this right now. Settling for that is usually what I call a result of the scrimp and save blueprint. You know what? To me, it's a shame. We have millions of fairly healthy, incredibly intelligent older people in this country who basically have traded their dreams for security. And here's the thing. Their entire lives revolve around their budget. I don't mean to judge, but as far as I'm concerned, what a way to live where your budget runs you. Let me say this right now. This is all a fear-based blueprint coming up. Yet the fact is that we have had dozens, if not hundreds of seniors create more wealth in only two years than they have in their last 50 years. It's all about your intention. It's all about how you think. Rich and successful people admire and model other rich and successful people. And what do most other people do? They resent the heck out of them, don't they? It's your story. It's your book. You write the script, every word of it, by the thoughts you think and the actions you take or you don't take. And the best part of this game is that it starts again every day. You see, you're the one who holds the marker. You hold the pen. You hold the tool that creates your life. And every morning, you decide what you're going to create today. You start with a blank canvas, and you write what your life is going to be today. And the only reason we keep on drawing the same thing over and over again is because we forget that we have the choice to begin again every single day. It's your life.
You have the right and you have the power to design it any way you choose. You can choose to commit to financial success and as well set aside time for friends and family and maintaining your health and your spiritual beliefs. You just choose it and then you organize your life in that way. This is not beyond you. You can do this. There is no one stopping you. So here are more powerful wealth steps that will dramatically change your money blueprint. First, commit to crafting your life the way you want it. Set an intention for how you want your life to look and feel in every area. Make them money, business, family, friends, fitness, and fun. Then, design a time management strategy that will allow you to balance all, not one of them, not some of them, but all of them. You hold the marker. Next, rich and successful people are bigger than their problems. And most other people are there for what? Smaller than their problems. The secret to success, my friends, is not to try and avoid or get rid of your problems. It's to grow yourself so you are bigger than any of your problems. It's never about the size of your problems. It's always about the size of you. The universe abhors a vacuum and will rush in to fill any space that's created for it. So the bigger you grow, the more money will have to come in if that's your intention. That's why you have to keep learning and keep growing yourself. You have to keep going. You have to keep growing. You can't coast. So here's another important wealth step. Continue learning. Rich and successful people are willing to learn and grow unsuccessful people think they already know success leaves clues so go to your public library read books attend classes and seminars you can learn to succeed at anything including money including business including any form of success that you choose and no matter what your age or situation you can learn your way to greater success one of the biggest differences between rich people and poor people and middle class people is that rich and successful people are willing to act in spite of fear and most other people let fear stop them. And one of the biggest mistakes most people make is waiting for the feeling of fear to subside and go away before they are willing to act. And these people usually wait forever. It is not necessary to try and get rid of fear in order to succeed. Rich and successful people have fear. Rich and successful people have doubts. Rich and successful people have worries. They just don't let those feelings stop them. Unsuccessful people have exactly the same feelings, but they let those feelings stop them. The secret is to practice. Practice acting in spite of fear. Practice acting in spite of uncertainty. Practice acting in spite of inconvenience. Practice acting in spite of discomfort. So here are some more critical wealth steps. First, stop letting fear rule your life. Whenever you feel fear, say to your mind the four magic words, and they are this, thank you for sharing, and then take the necessary action. One step in the right direction is worth a hundred years of thinking about it. It's simple. Rich people do what broke people only think about. Get uncomfortable. You heard me right. Get uncomfortable. I said earlier, comfortable is the kiss of death to success. There's no growth in comfortable. To get to a new level of life, you have to be willing to get uncomfortable. Now here's the coolest thing. What happens when you get uncomfortable? What happens when you do things that are uncomfortable? Eventually, what happens? They become comfortable. So whenever you feel comfortable in any area of your life, I challenge you to do something new and get uncomfortable. So let's review. Your money blueprint will determine your financial success. You can change your money blueprint. One of the ways to change your money blueprint is to adopt wealthy ways of thinking. They include taking full accountability for everything that happens in your life, especially your financial life. Playing the money game to win. I want you to commit to abundance instead of just survival and security. Commit to creating wealth, not just for yourself, but also to assist others. 
Admire, bless, and study rich and successful people. Be bigger than your problems. Commit to continuous growth and continuous learning. And act in spite of fear. My friends, if you follow these steps, you will begin to transform your money blueprint and reset your financial thermostat for natural and automatic success. The fact is, our world is nothing more than a reflection of the people who make it up. And as each of you individually raises your consciousness, the world raises its consciousness, moving from fear to courage, from anger to love, and from scarcity to prosperity for all. It's therefore up to you to enlighten yourself so that you can add more light to the world.